Welcome back to the Jake Man Show. I am the Jake Man at the mic. Today we're going to be talking all about the NFL today. Honestly, we're kind of at an interesting time when it comes to the NFL. Um, I think everybody has been talking about how the running backs have been either shortchanged or they've been... Um, basically told that they're not as useful and or as um, important. So there's even there's even some people thinking that uh, we're not even having an ability to have the running back win Super Bowls or even be a part of it, just like the old days where fantastic defenses can win all kinds of big-time games, Super Bowls, the whole thing. It's just not that way anymore, so... As you can see on the screen, we've got uh, Saquon Barkley, and he did sign uh, just last week. So the guy did get paid. The question is, did he do everything that he needed to do in order to make all that sweet cash? So we're talking a little bit about uh, his deal and the specifics behind it. So... Um, he was under a franchise tag that was going to pay him close to about uh, just uh, just over ten million dollars, which was fully guaranteed. Um, but now he's up to the point where he could actually make eleven million dollars, and that eleven million dollars is uh, heavily incented. So that incentives or those incentives are pretty much specific he'll get 333,000 for uh, 1,300 rushing yards and another 303 for 11 touchdowns and another 303 for 65 catches so the guy's going to make some money um, and honestly I think this probably is the way the running back situation is going to end up becoming the norm uh, mostly incentive laced because you can pretty much just you know do the running back deal by committee so, um, other side of this thing is uh, Barkley's going to get some money up front. So, um, so he's going to get a two million dollar signing bonus and under the franchise tag. So he would have, you know, not gotten all of his money even if it was that fully guaranteed scenario. Uh, he would have had to wait till September. So, I mean, I. The way I read everything is is specific, but we'll get into what I actually think is is probably the the point where everybody needs to kind of come together as a collective within the NFL and also the college uh, football landscape is going to probably either change or the NFL is going to have to adapt to it. So, um, Giants are going to get uh, you know they're going to get a lot from Barkley. Uh, they also have the ability to franchise him next year as well for a whopping $13.2 million, which would be a 120% increase over his 2023 pay. So you have to make the decision, would, would this, what would you have done? Would you have gone ahead and you know, made those, I guess, those decisions specifically to you know, your own... I guess your own thought process and how it's and how you're going to end up, you know, paying for your family. I mean, we got some of the most dynamic folks that are in the NFL right now are running backs. That's where all of the, I'd say the fantasy football side of things are. So you've got a gambling aspect to it. Um, you can also kind of take a look at the fact that Daniel Jones got his money. They also uh, just paid one of the major offensive linemen, so they're paying people as much money as they can. And it's it looks like the Giants are really you know ready to pay, but the market is only allowing for so much from a standpoint of what money's left over for running backs. Um, you're going to get almost every kind of dynamic play from a Saquon Barkley that is. Uh, going to put you into the playoffs if you can protect him and have the Daniel Jones combination. With the Brian Dable specific, you're getting a scary, scary team. I'm not even a giant, but the you know to, to watch them play, 
to watch them do as much, you know, fantastic on the field so this running back stuff doesn't end up becoming such a big problem. Then you're pretty much in a, in a place that's, uh, I've always said, uh, a more fluid situation for a team to go ahead and sign other people. So all of the, the main pieces of their pie is all coming together. Um, so I, I think what you're going to see now is not no necess- necessarily a template or anything like that of where other teams are going to fall in line. But I do think that you're going to see some uh, like-minded contracts coming forward. You're going to probably see a heavily incentive-laced deal for running backs. I mean, you've got Delvin Cooks out there just visiting with the Jets. You've got Josh Jacobs that's not even, you know, uh, got a team. Or, I mean, he's got a team, but, you know, the Raiders are pretty much going to hold out. So, or they're going to hold out to pay him. So, Josh Jacobs could hold out, but are the Raiders going to hold out before he holds out? So you just never even know. So while we're watching as much of the footage on Saquon and the best plays that you've seen, you know, from last season, kind of gets you charged up for the NFL. And I, uh, I'm a huge college football fan. Uh, We'll talk to you about the uh, the teams I actually. Uh, pull for Um, but there's a lot of fantastic um, you know there are a lot of fantastic players coming out of college football that's really I believe um, you know going to either test the market uh, as far as running backs are concerned or break the market so um, the old or I should say not the old but the the new thought process is mama don't let your babies grow up to be running backs so um i guess this kind of let's get into that whole piece as far as the college football landscape because you're seeing the what i believe the nil is most likely taking us into that next step from um how you know people are going to get paid i mean you might see Running backs, with you know, where have or the the NCAA has forced most of the running backs and all the players to actually wait until their junior year in order to be able to come into the NFL. Or you could even have some more, uh, which is you've seen this with wide receivers recently, um, and some offensive. I'm, I'm sorry, some offensive uh, players, uh, offensive linemen. Um, and of course, your edge rushers as well are, you know, making these decisions that agents are walking up to them saying, listen, I need your body to be in as best shape as it possibly can. Therefore, if that's going to be something that is important for a, a uh, agent and, it, and their client to talk about, then they're, they're going to make decisions the sophomore year and whether or not they're even going to play, which then, of course, hurts the, hurts the team. Now, you're probably saying, Jake, man, that doesn't necessarily mean a lot, except for the fact that, um, you know, it, it, it's, it only is going to not allow that running back to be showcased for another whole year. I push back and say that it's not only probably going to be better for the running back, I think that it's important that it, um, it's more uh, advantageous for that running back to to hold out uh no not to hold out as far as the nfl but for the um specific um you know college experience that they're going to pretty much have to make some pretty tough decisions based on you know do i want the body time do i want the hits do i want as much uh, uh pounding on the body because it's the last position that you can really just you know haul off and take them out so I mean, I think really, to be brutally honest, I think that there's a a point where you can say, let's let's allow NIL to pay the running backs, which is, you know, I think is going to be probably the the current situation. So the 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 college will have to take care of that in order to keep the running back. So I would say the sophomore years for running backs are going to be considered a free agency years that they're going to almost have to sign for the for the junior year. And if that's the case, 
Then you have this, you know, I'd say a free agency before the draft. Then you get a rookie contract, but then it comes down to the fact that you're actually not even going to be staying on a, a full rookie contract. I think if the um, NFL wants to protect some of these players, they can't hold them to the same standards. I mean, you're seeing wide receiver play and all this stuff, but um, you know Darius Slayton on the screen is pretty much going to make more than Saquon um, probably in his next contract just because of the wide receiver side. Saquon Barkley, you run about something like 50% of the offense through Saquon, and that's just and that's just you know the the basic um, you know punching through the line and or you know some out routes or something like that. So if you utilize him in a uh, you know a triple. Or uh, then you're actually kind of your wide out scenario. Then you're actually going to be seeing even him being more of a wide receiver. So now you're talking about as much as, you know, I don't think as much as the Christian McCaffrey side of it, but you're certainly seeing a, um, a larger amount of, uh, of opportunities for, that, for those, you know, two players, or I'm sorry, for uh, Daniel Jones and Saquon to end up you know, accounting for as much as 85, 90% of the offense. Um, and I think that the corresponding pay payments are, 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 are certainly um, indicative of what they thought as well. But that still goes back to if you're going to have a symmetry between the running backs, you know, paying for people, you know, in what's called a uh, appropriate manner, you're going to have to make, take some, you know, big, wide, chances and see how you're going to do this uh, and i think it starts back in the in the college um, college ranks to make some pretty big decisions on the you know the, the i guess the uh their future because if the college ends up holding then you're almost adding value in that first year as far as running backs because you know, right now, a running back has got to come out and play week one and play all of the preseason. Well, I'm not, maybe not all the preseason, but a healthy amount of the preseason for the rookies if there's an aging running back on the other side of it. So you're seeing, um, you know, probably way too much of the Giants stuff, but I wanted you to see how much, I mean, almost every single one of these um, plays that you see are either part of Saquon or they're utilizing Saquon as a decoy so not only are they trying to you know pay him for what his production on the field is but they're also you know not even paying him for his production when he's you know a decoy or somebody that's on the other <clears throat> just waiting for uh, the ball and or just kind of you know suck the defense back away into into you know trying to double cover Saquon so I I think that you're probably in a in a pretty I'd say precarious situation but the owners are not going to make these decisions lightly they're going to continue forward they're going to continue to want us or want the uh, the people the fans to come in and watch the product that they're putting on the field obviously but if that product doesn't have the superstars like the running backs, if we can't have the running backs in our fantasy football lineup, if we can't have all of those things, then we're pretty much not getting what we've paid for. We're not getting any of those things that uh, we decide are important for our um, entertainment because we have so many different times of our or different uh, uh, options for entertainment. So, I mean, you're seeing just play after play after play of probably one of the best if not the best running back certainly top three that is playing football i mean you're talking about the breakaway speeds fantastic stuff so i i, I don't know who won this deal so so from a wrapping up perspective i think that it's important that we are trying to as fans and as consumers of the 
of the NFL that we're going to want to or demand to have certain uh, people on the field. And we can only do that by how we watch it. We're going to be consuming the NFL tremendously over the next you know, six months, and it's going to be fantastic. Uh, but we're going to have to take care of our players. We're going to have to uh, make sure that we are demanding excellence. Um, otherwise, the the NFL is going to pretty much say we're going to put on the field whatever we want to put on the field. That's okay. So players like Saquon can get their money. Um, I think that the rest of the running backs are going to get their money too, except for the fact that there's going to have to be some uh, major changes to how we are um, or how the, the game is going to be represented by the running backs. And it starts in college. So I really do thank you guys uh, for all of this. I think that it's going to be a lot of fun to continue forward and get better at this. You know, I've just figured out that uh, uh, I enjoy the heck out of all this. So I don't really, really care about how much it is um, being consumed as far as views and things. If you do like it, like and subscribe, that'd be great. But, um, you know, I'm going to get better at it. I'm going to kind of... Con- I guess use different styles and templates and maybe we'll even get some folks in here to you know have a little podcast or something like this but I just wanted you to uh, experience what's in my brain and if you like it then like I said you know tune in I'm gonna put out uh, at least once a week something that's gonna be available for you guys but anyway you have just been in the Jake man show And remember, JD Media Hub Productions is where I'm at. I am the Jake Man, and I'm always at the mic. Make sure that you do like and subscribe, please. It's important. I do. uh, I do want to make sure that uh, you know. It's. uh, I'm. I'm hearing from you guys, but I am having a blast, and it's something that I've always wanted to do. So I appreciate you. For those of you that hung on to the end, um, you know this is. The Jake Man, and we'll see you in about a week or maybe sooner. Maybe I should say we'll see you next time. That's the Jake Man Show. Peace.